Aston Martin has been undergoing massive changes in the latest period and it seems like it's a combination of good and bad depending on the aspect from which you're viewing the events that have occupied the Silverstone base squad. Some of the hottest topics that were related to Aston Martin were the offer they made to Adrian Newey but after that it was reported by Bloomberg that Lawrence Stroll is willing to sell a minority stake of the team which could rise to a significant number putting his son also, another very hot topic for all the wrong reasons, in a difficult position for the foreseeable future. But with all these changes coming forward, as well as Honda joining forces with Aston Martin from 2025 onwards, could we see a different landscape in the Silverstone-based squad? It goes without saying that Aston Martin is one of the most controversial teams, primarily due to the way it's being led. The ownership relationship between Lawrence and Lance Stroll has been making the media headlines ever since the Canadian billionaire rebranded Racing Point under the name of Aston Martin. But this has put his son in a comfort zone that he's not very willing to exit, considering that his father publicly announced his seat is safe as long as he is the owner of the team. But after last year's minor state sale to an American company named Arctos, estimated around $1.3 billion, Lawrence is now reportedly pushing for yet another sale of this kind, only with a larger percentage of the company involved. Bloomberg reports that the Canadian giant is ready to sell as much as 25% of the team in a similar deal to what he did last year, now that the momentum is on his side and a lot of positive events have blessed the future of the team, with the only dark spot remaining to be his son's performance, which just does not seem to improve under any circumstances imposed by his father's leadership. We'll get to that later in the video and how it could potentially repel investors, but as of now, we'd like to talk about this sale and what it could possibly mean. Investors in F1 are a common thing and we don't want to exaggerate this move by Lawrence Stroll. It does not mean that he's selling the team and giving up on the dream to see his son win a championship, a scenario that almost seems a bit funny and bizarre at the same time. But it does mean that he might be willing to let go of the gas a bit and give other companies more commanding roles in the team. This is essentially bad news for Lance because companies like Aramco and Arctos won't care that much when it comes to the family relationships in the team. They care about performance and they care about results. So if they're not there, Lawrence will definitely be put to the test. It's either the investors' money and the results on the table or him continuing to swim in the midfield with his son being present in the racing seat. Now that Alonso secured his future with Aston Martin, a process that happened after he had a lengthy conversation with Honda and made sure that all of the previous obstacles from 2017 were fixed, it's safe to assume that Aston Martin and the Japanese manufacturer will have high goals once the new regulations kick in and that is the right mindset to enter the 2026 season as well. Honda has a lot of knowledge in building engines and now that the 2026 era will see a huge emphasis put on engine supremacy as well as the battery in general, it wouldn't be that far-fetched of a scenario to see Aston Martin in the top three teams on the grid. However, in order for them to achieve this, they would need somebody who knows and understands the cars better than anyone else on the grid. And with Adrian Newey's rumoured exit from Red Bull, the Silverstone-based squad has used the nationality card on this one by trying to lure the 65-year-old expert to their own camp. While many experts reported that Newey is reportedly going to Ferrari if he decides to call it a day with Red Bull. The fact is that he would have to move to Italy and that's something that was crucial when he extended the deal with Red Bull once the initial Ferrari offer came through the back door in 2020. Be that as it may, Aston Martin's headquarters and factories are located in Silverstone, meaning that he won't have to put all of the effort on his own back to move to Italy. Although to be fair, if you are the type of man like Newey who wants to tackle new challenges, that might not be that big of an obstacle either. But what Aston Martin has is a driver that Newey admitted he regrets not working with in his career, and that is Fernando Alonso. True, he also admitted regretting not working with drivers like Hamilton. Hamilton and teams like Ferrari and now that both of these are reunited from 2025 onwards the cards are looking a bit more stacked towards the Marinello team which might be one of the reasons why during Saudi Arabia's race in Jeddah Lawrence Stroll and Aramco gave Newey and Verstappen a blank 
cheque to write their salaries on just to join their team from 2025 onwards, something that was denied immediately. All of this is helping Aston Martin to a great extent because these actions are generating more and more interest from the investors. And if you think about it, this is not a team that should be looked at as a father-son owned one anymore. Not after the latest signings with Honda and the partnerships that they've been making left, right and centre. Yes, Lance is an underperforming driver and if he wants to see the slander towards him stop anytime soon, he would have to start finding performance out of somewhere. Be that as it may, Lawrence will start to experience external pressure from his partners when it comes to results and Honda will be the first to start seeking performance out of a car that they know will be capable of finishing in the top five on a regular basis. This is something that the director of Honda Racing Corporation, Kojay Watanabe, spoke about and when elaborating on it to a further extent, he went on to say, We had many conversations with Aston Martin regarding our partnership from 2026. During that time, we exchanged opinions about drivers too and we shared an understanding between us and Aston Martin that Alonso was definitely a top-class driver. Aston Martin asked us if there would be any problems from Honda if they extended Alonso's contract and the situation was shared at various stages, but Honda did not make any requests regarding this matter. In any case, we should naturally discuss what kind of driver lineup we need to win. What is kind of bad news for Honda is that Aston Martin is not willing to let go of Lance and the excuse is not based on the father-son relationship that is perceived as toxic by the outside F1 experts, but bizarrely enough, enough, it's because the team believes in the technical expertise that Lance brings to the table. This is something that has been hugely emphasised by their team principal, Mike Crack, who went on to say that while the entire fuss has been around Fernando Alonso lately, people tend to forget that Aston Martin is the home of Lance Stroll as well, and that the entire project revolves around him, whether we like it or not. This is one of the key reasons when it comes to selling a portion of your team because if you are Lawrence Stroll, a successful businessman, you would have to present your investors with a case outside of the massive revenue that F1 is creating. The points structure couldn't be clearer. The more points you score, the higher you finish in the Constructors and Drivers Championships and the more money your team gets as prize cash from Formula One. Furthermore, this enables greater interest from the sponsors to invest because they would spend much more time being broadcast live, which means better advertisement for their own company. And if you have a driver who's not performing to the desired level, you're automatically entering this business model crippled with 50% of the potential that you have originally anticipated before your investment. Therefore, it's safe to say that all of these changes would definitely prompt Lawrence to have a very serious talk with his son and to wake him up from the dream he's living in. It's not just Lawrence anymore. There are lots of business partners and now that Honda is entering the sport, they of course will be looking for results and not midfield crumbs to be picked by Lance. Obviously we know that Honda will apply great pressure on Aston Martin to change the Canadian driver with one of their own, for example, Tsunoda, or a driver from their own academy to be developed into a successful driver as well. But that's all in the future and we're yet to see how this situation with Lance and the sale of quite a fair chunk of the team will go down in the coming weeks. With this in mind, do you think that Lawrence has the right to sell a stake in Aston Martin as large as 25%? And more importantly, do you think it pushes the team in the right direction and could finally get rid of Lance Stroll? Let us know in the comments below. And once you do that, have a look at the video that's appearing on your screen right now.